أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله علم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا حبيبنا مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم استفاه الله عز وجل وجعله خير البرية قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قل أتي الله ورسول فإن تولوا فإن الله لا يحب الكافرين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعثت معلما Praises are due to Allah. We praise Allah and we glorify Him. We put our trust in Allah in all of our fears. In times of difficulties that we experience in our lives. And also in the time of ease and comfort, we put our trust in Him. We testify that Allah, to Him belongs the heavens and the earth. And we testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and before him there was no creation and that everything will perish save and accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we send salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we testify that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a mercy to all mankind. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are here once again sharing this platform with you on this blessed day of Jum'ah with the intent to inspire and to guide and to educate and with the intent for our Iman to increase and our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase. We gather in this platform with the intent that our hearts are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil yaqeen, with certainty and our love for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, brothers and sisters, to witness the month of Rabi al-Awwal, the month of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the month in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. It is necessary and obligatory on each and every one of us to reflect on our lives and see where we stand with our relationship with Allah and most importantly where we stand with our relationship with our Prophet Muhammad If we want to be people that taste the sweetness of Iman and faith If we want to be people that attain success on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah, then our way forward as we work to experience that taste, we have an obligation to connect ourselves with our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and try to intensify our love and our mawadda and mahabba for him 
It is based on our love for the Prophet ﷺ. We will attain success or not attain success. It is based on our relationship with the Prophet ﷺ and where our hearts are in connection with him, in relation to him, will depend on our success in the day of Yom al -Qiyam. And therefore, it is time now for us to analyze our lives and see where we stand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the glorious Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Say, O Muhammad, to the people, inform them that if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Command them, command them to follow you, O Muhammad. The important thing here before following is love. If you are a claimant of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are claiming that you love Allah, then the obligation that you have, the responsibility that you have, is to emulate our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And when you emulate the Prophet and follow the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. The fruits that you will bear, subhanAllah, is that you attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we, subhanAllah, demonstrate our love for Allah? By fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to keep away from the things that He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has prohibited. To worship Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only out of fear, but out of love. To dedicate our lives to Him. And if you do that, and you claim that you love Allah, then that should be the thing that you do. And also, following the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Following the Messenger of Allah, by following the sunnah of Rasulullah, following the the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the sense emulating yourself with the with the khuluq of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And at the end of that verse, Allah subhanahu wa taala He says. قُلْ أَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ Emphasize in this. Say, O Muhammad, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. The status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seen here. The status of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seen here in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers and humanity at large to obey him and he plays the name of Rasulullah beside his name. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Your obedience to Allah would be meaningless if you do not obey our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا And if you turn away, if you do decide to deviate from this path of loving Allah and emulating the Prophet, loving the Prophet and obeying the Prophet, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا 
فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Indeed, Allah does not love those who deny His, his bounties, those who transgress. Allah does not love uh, those who deny His, his existence. Allah does not love those who deny his, his Prophet. So, the key point that we learn from this Quranic verse is that we have an obligation to follow the Prophet And if you follow the Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will intervene in your life. Allah will pave the way for you and He will bless you in every walks of your life. There is this very beautiful writing of Sheikh Ahmed ibn Ajiba, scholar that lived in 1747 to 1809. He, bought, he wrote a, a very beautiful book that is called or entitled Prophetic Grace, The Quranic Merits of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A very old writing. It is from the Athar, Qutb al-Athar, like the old writings. And portions of it are actually translated. In this very beautiful writing, this Imam he highlighted Quranic verses, Quranic verses to show the excellence of our Prophet. Quranic verses that highlights the excellence of the Prophet وسلم, taken from the page of the glorious Quran highlighting the status of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taken from the pages of the glorious Quran and I share this with you because only through our knowledge of him we will able to develop this love for him Thursday I was you know that was yesterday I shared some points re regarding loving the Prophet and therefore I want to share with you some of the alamat, some of the signs that is necessary for us to look at whether we possess those traits and those signs. Because those are the signs to demonstrate the love of our Prophet Muhammad If you love the Prophet and you look at yourself, you will see within you those qualities. And the first thing that our ulama and our scholars highlighted, that if you love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you will obey him so where are you in obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where are you in adopting the akhlaq al-khilqiyya wal-khulqiyya where are you in adopting the, the sunnah of the Prophet and the morale of the Prophet ﷺ in terms of his physical appearance and his khuluq most importantly. His kindness, his generosity, his compassion, his love, his respect, his care. His forbearance. Where are you in emulating that or adopting those ways? So there is Sunnah al Khilqiyya wal Khulqiyya. The Sunnah that where you emulate the Prophet on the outer appearance, a lot of people we do that. 
we try to, to dress like the Prophet, we try to, subhanAllah, um, you know, appear similar like the Prophet in terms of our physical appearance. We groom our hairs, you know, uh, because we want to emulate the Prophet Sallallahu our dress code. That may have its merit, but what is much more important is the akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu So they are saying one of the signs of loving Allah Subhan loving the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the signs of loving the Prophet is that you emulate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. تَزْعَمُونَ حُبُّ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُعْتِي فَإِنْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَتَعْتُهُ فَإِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُتِيعُ You claim you love Allah and you claim you love the Prophet ﷺ but yet you do not obey Allah nor obey the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and if your love for him was genuine you would find yourself obeying Allah, you will find yourself obeying the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And the second thing that if you love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you will honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ta'zeem Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa rasula Inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira Litu'minu billahi wa rasulihi wa tu'azziruhu wa tu'aqiruhu wa tusabbihuhu bukratan wa asila Indeed we have sent you as a witness and a glad tidings and as a warner so that you may believe in Allah and his messenger and you honor him and that you honor him to means that basically to that you honor the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there are various ways we can honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there are various ways we can demonstrate this honor to him Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us in the Quran لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي raise not your voice above the voice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of the ways for honoring the Prophet وسلم, is that subhanallah that we try to always remember him and ask yourself whether the way we conduct ourselves are like like him like the Prophet Allah says raise not your voice above the, the voice of the Prophet and when you raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet that is not honoring the Prophet that is not demonstrating your love for the Prophet honoring the Prophet is necessary the companions they will honor the Prophet in so many different ways they will not speak when he speaks. They will not interrupt the Prophet ﷺ. They will be respectful to the Prophet ﷺ. Honoring the Prophet ﷺ is an important part of our, our deen and it's a sign of loving the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other important part
for us to uh, demonstrate our love for him and the sign of love in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that if you love someone you will mention that person continuously abundantly you will mention him abundantly when the day goes by how often do we speak about the Prophet when you care about something and you love something or love someone you will speak about that person or that thing with your friends with your families every opportunity that you get you will mention that thing or that person you will highlight the qualities of that person what makes you explain to people what makes you love that person what is so unique about that person and you will try to articulate that in the most beautiful way if we claim we love the Prophet and we don't speak about him we don't mention him on a daily basis we don't articulate and educate and inspire others about him that we shy away from speaking about him we shy away from mentioning his name so if we love the Prophet let us make this commitment that we will learn about him and whatever we learn about him we speak about him we teach our children some aspect of his life if you have a a child that you read in a bedtime story to you know, share some aspect of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. if you're an educator in any way educate those around you and those under your care about the Prophet ﷺ. now the other key point that if you love the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that you will definitely send excessive darood and salams unto our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuha alladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Indeed, Allah and His angels send salutations to our Prophet Muhammad. O oh, you believe, send salutations unto our Prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that that he and his angels are sending salutations to the Prophet he and his angels is sending continuous salutations to the Prophet and he commands us to send salutations to the Prophet and that is also one way of honoring the Prophet by sending salutations to the Prophet Muhammad And therefore, I would advise our brothers and our sisters to send salutations to the Prophet on a daily basis. Allocate a portion of the time uh, in subhanallah in doing your dhikr doing your istighfar and also sending salutations to the Prophet when you send salutations to the Prophet those salutations reach to the Prophet and the Prophet knows that you are sending salutations to him 
Allah, Allah, His Apostle, His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, knows that you are sending salutations to Him. How beautiful is that? And therefore, do not deprive yourself from this. Do not deprive yourself from attaining the blessings and the rewards and the thawab that is attached to sending salutations to the Prophet ﷺ. The importance of sending salutations to the Prophet is seen that in our prayers it becomes a part of our salah when we in the jalsa position we do the attahiyat, we recite the attahiyat, and also we recite Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. So if you love the Prophet wasallam, also that person will love the family and the Ahlul Bayt. They will also love the the household of the Prophet ﷺ. That you will love Ali, and you will love Abbas, and you will love Hamza, and you will love everyone from the Ahlul Bayt. You will love Fatima. So, what is necessary as well for us to develop that love for the Ahlul Bayt is to learn about the Ahlul Bayt as well. Who are the Ahlul Bayt? Who is the household of the Prophet? And we love them not because only they are the Ahlul Bayt, but we love them because of the sacrifices they made for this deen. The things that they give up for goodness and for the society in which they live in. To that extent that they are those among the Ahlul Bayt that give their life for standing up for truth and for justice. When we see someone stands up for something that is good, we always, in our time, we always speak highly of that person. Saying that that person is a virtuous person, that person is a good person, is an outstanding person because of the stand that they take. And if you if you learn about the Prophet's uh, household, and about Hassan and Hussein, and their struggles, you know, there isn't anything more other than admiration that we can we admire them, and we de develop. The, the love for them. The Prophet said, loving the Ahlul Bayt is a part of, of, of Iman and faith. Loving the Ahlul Bayt is important in our faith. And therefore, uh, it's necessary for us to learn about them. Also, if we love the um, messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what will happen is that we will find ourselves love the Quran and reciting the Quran. We will find ourselves love. Loving the recitation of Al-Qur'an. Because the Prophet ﷺ kana khuluquhu Al-Qur'an. And he would recite the Qur'an on, on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Because the Qur'an was revealed unto the Prophet ﷺ. So one of the signs of loving the Prophet ﷺ is to build in. So if we love the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, it is only right for us to see where we stand in comparison with these signs. 
the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they demonstrated love for the Prophet, intensified love for the Prophet And this was seen in their words and their actions. Here is it, Bilal, when he was in his dying bed, he was crying and he was weeping and his wife saying to him as she is removing the covering from his head and he responded by saying I am not crying because of my illness and that I will transition into the next realm or the you know that I'm dying but I'm crying out of happiness and joy. Tomorrow, I will reach Muhammad and those love those who love him among the companions. Tomorrow, I will meet my beloved Muhammad and his companions. So the tears that flows from his eyes was one out of joy and not sadness that he will be reunited with the Prophet And here is it that you have also one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad by the name of Sa'id ibn Jubair al-Ansari went to the Prophet and the Prophet noticed that he was quite sad. The Prophet also noticed that he was sad. He wasn't happy. And this was the way of the Prophet. This was the way of the Prophet. That he will look at the companions and try to console them and comfort them. He was concerned about their state. And when he saw their, his sadness, he asked him, why is it that you're sad? And his response was, his response was, that tomorrow you will be resurrected with the prophets. You will be raised with the prophets and we will not be raised with the prophets. So he was, his concern was the separation. His concern was the separation from the Prophet So brothers and, and sisters, there are so many stories more we can share with you to demonstrate how the companions love the Prophet ﷺ. But today's message is that as we commemorate the life of Rasulullah ﷺ, and as we reflect on his life, it is important for us to make this commitment that we will continuously follow the Prophet and try to intensify our love for him or do things that will increase our love for him, the Prophet. ﷺ. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, guide us, and protect us, and grant us goodness in this life and also the afterlife. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.